Okay, so we are starting unit six again. We briefly touched upon it at the end of last class. Um, is there any questions from unit four and five? You know, if we keep going, we'll finish this book. <laughs> so, uh, which will be actually pretty comprehensive. So, and if you have the book, you can reference it. And obviously, we all have the audios from the internet. So, you can. If you just study them over and over, you'll have basic colloquial skills in Tibetan, right? And then you'll have to find a way to challenge yourself from there. Like going to India after the pandemic's over. All right. Where are you? Where are you? I have a question, but it's about pronunciation because last class I heard uh, Sunam said like the R, like we do in Spanish, like. I don't remember the word, but it was like re. He said re. He didn't yeah, say re or re. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not sure about that. And in the audios, uh, they have a different accent than Suna, I believe. I don't know, but yeah, that's yeah. Good question, So good is it okay to say like la re? Yes. Yes. Okay. The R is slightly rolled in Tibetan. And at the end of the word too, par. Yeah. Also, what are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Did I blow your mind? I can't hear you, you're on mute. I can't hear you, Hasso. Stop making weird faces. Yeah, I was just checking if I can move, separate A if I was looking at the camera. <laughs> Visually. Hasso. Stop distracting. So yeah, the R is slightly rolled in Tibetan, beginning and the end. Uh, Sunam rolls his R's at the end. Par, um, ser, yeah. Um, once in a while, the R drops out completely in colloquial, um, which is not proper um, in like, if you're, speak, if you're reading out of a literary book, but it happens. Um, so, yeah, the R gets rolled, and once in a while it gets dropped. So it would say, like, Dorje. Mm, Dorje. No, no. Dor, Dor. Because it's not the middle of the word. Middle of the word. Of the word. Dorje. Yeah. It wouldn't get rolled, it get rolled. It rolled most strongly at the end of the word in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, okay. As, as, far, as, I, as, as far as I've seen. <clears throat> On the call. All right. So, who wants to be Pema? What's Pema mean? Lotus. Yeah. Why we? Why? Why is it? Why is it spelled funny? Why is it P A D M A? Pema. Uh, why? Yeah. Why? I don't know, the, the, the D suffix uh, on love the A uh, sound and makes it P? Is that the question? Uh, I think Lydia knows. Go ahead, Lydia. Well, I think it's because it comes from Sanskrit. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Padma and then Tibetan say Pema, but it's directly from Sanskrit. It's a Sanskrit word. The, what's the word for lotus in Sanskrit? I mean, oh. Uh, wait. What's the meaning of pet, Padma or what? Padma. Oh, I shouldn't say that. There's different words for lotus. But we talked about one last time. Um, Kamala? Kamala, yeah. Kamala. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay, let's begin. Uh, wait, Oscar. Wait, no, Oscar's mic is echoing. Hasso is Pema and I'll be Kelsang. What's Kelsang mean, Hasso? Uh, the one with God, good fortune and a good opportunity. Mm -mm. The good fortune is the good opportunity. P purity. Sang means pure. Uh, like lop like, sang. Yeah, or sangye. Nope, different word. That's sang, not sang. 
Oh. Yep. <laughs> it's probably related though. Yeah. So don't feel too bad. <laughs> but it's Kelwa Tang Sangpo. In Tibetan, very often, same in Chinese, very often uh, phrases are combinations of two syllables, even though they're both monosyllabic languages. So Kelwa Tang Sangpo is Kel Sang, right? That's what happens. Um, like, like, what's the short way to say bodhicitta in Tibetan? There's two. But... Semke? Semke? Yes, or? Or Jochen? Jo no. ACI1. <laughs> in class. Same. Zhang Sim. Yeah. Yeah, they both mean Zhang Chub Semke. So they're both two word two syllable abbreviations for a four syllable word, right? Zhang Chub Semke, right? You get it? How do you say bodhisattva in Tibetan? Uh, Jan Chub Sem. Sempa. 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 Chu Sempa. What does Sempa mean? Uh, the one who possesses a mind. Wow. And in Sanskrit? Uh, sattva. Yeah. What does Sat mean? Uh, mind or something like that. It means is. To be. Yeah, said as, right? Uh, Being. Why did, why did they translate Sattva as warrior? Uh, I think in that case, that's what it means, you know? Um, Powerful being, maybe? Like a yeah, warrior. it's something like that. It's not literally warrior. Literally warrior would be like Vira, like, Virabhadra, you know, or something like that. Pao, um, a different spelling of pa means warrior. D P A apostrophe. That's what they called pao when we went to Sarah. They called her. They called her pao, meaning like the powerful one or something. Cause she is. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'm. Go ahead. Um, Kelsangla Kerang Kerang Kapar Pepka. Nice. I like your R rolling. Okay. What does what does that mean? Kelsangla. Dear Kelsang. Yes. Holy Kelsang. Uh, Kerang. You Kapar. Uh, going? No. Kapar. Kapar. Ah, where? Where? Kapar. Good. Pepka. Honorific for going. Perfect. Good. You were going. Yes. Right? Perfect translation. You were going. <laughs> okay. My turn. Actually, no, not my turn. I did this last time with Sunam. Rivas. Are you yes. doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? Yeah, I'll be here. Um, yeah, thanks. Okay, all good. Uh, go ahead, you read this. Oh. Not trom, troll. Trom, yeah. Troll ma, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not troll mom. Trom la. Trom la. Mm -hmm. Troll, is trom la or troll ma? Trom la. Trom la, okay. Na trom la, uh, ka, kor, no, tro, 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 ko, no, tro, ke, i, tro, ki, yin. Perfect. Lydia. <laughs> yes, word? Why did, why does he say tro, ki, yin about here and and it said Pepka up here. 
I think Pepka is going to be the honorific and Drogiyin is the humilific. So why would he say Drogiyin? Because he's answering. You never say honorific for yourself. Yay! Perfect answer. She understands it and translated it perfectly. Thank you, Lydia. Okay. Um, next part, Mr. Rivas. I think you're on mute. Really. Sorry, yeah. It's that's che? No, ke. <clears throat> ke. Okay. Ke rang. Ah, ke rang. Yeah. Ke rang ka par yep. te ka. Perfect. What's that mean? I think I'm going to the market. No, ke rang. Ah, no, ke rang. Ke rang. Yeah, where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? I want to yeah, market. I'm... Where are you going? All right. Good. Pasito, well, Ina pasito. is outside. Oh, sorry. What, Oscar? What, Oscar? Ina is outside. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Should I go? Yes, please. Uh, uh, nga, nga, ye. Mm. No, nga, yang, ye. Yeah. Trom la drogi yi. Yes. So I guess I guess yang means as well or two. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Also two. That's good. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it will be something like nga yang trolla drogi yin. Trom la. Trom la drogi yin. Drogi. Drogi yin. They kind of hang together, drogi yin. Drogi yin. So yeah. this this um ka shap um giku e is what's the key? Key means key is this is endo or ando. Uh, endo. Okay. This is the uh, e this is the present continuous, whatever that's called. Oh cool. Right? Okay. Um and the young, they usually don't say young. Um, they say ye. Um, so they would say nga ye. Nga ye trom la jogi yin. It's written the same. I don't know why. Don't correct me if I say nga ye, though, because that's what, it, that's what they say. Um, but if you say nga yang, I think you'll be understood, and it is the correct reading of the word. But that's not what people say, right? Um, here it says also that know yeah. that na yang is usually pronounced na e. Yeah, but if you say e, I don't think that na it's ye, na e. And what that does mean, the ye? Also. Also. Okay. Tambien. So that means outside too. So man, so man. I would make you co-host Oscar, but not everyone's here. It's too late. Um, <laughs> you did your job. Okay, so I'm Kelsung, right? Oh no, Rivas is Kelsung. Go ahead, Rivas. Yeah, um, that's it's. Oh, uh, that was Ja. Yeah, but with an S on Sa on the end. Just J, J. Yes, perfect. Who Jenna? Mom. Ni. Uh huh. Ni. Yep. Nyam. Yep. Nyam. Yeah, Ninyam. Yep. Ninyam. Uh, do. Pep. To. Yeah. Whoa. Um. So, uh, chena is a. What does che literally mean? Duche. Yeah. 
Yeah, dude chase. Uh, anyway, it means did. Yeah, che pa pa yata cha dengbu che ta che b y e d is the verb to do in Tibetan. Okay, you should memorize that one. But che pa yata um, cha sa che means did past tense. Okay. Um, and so what chena means in that case, it's a colloquialism. It's it's a phrase. Okay. All right. Uh, what does nga mean, Rivas? I. Perfect. Me. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What does what does ni mean? Ni. Chick ni sum she nga. Truk. Dun. Anybody? We oui. two. two. Yes. Yes. <laughs> two. Uh, and you because you were counting, right? Yeah. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, waiting, I was hoping. I was nice. Like, I have, I have to say uh, two. <laughs> yeah, it's two. Good. And Nyam, what does Nyam? Where is Nyam most famously in all of Buddhism? I'm guessing it's together, but I don't know. It means One. equal. Nirvana. Not Nirvana. That's Nyang, which means grief. But good try. Ah, uh, yes. Or Nya. Nya or Nyang? Nya Nya and La Depa. Um, One. Nyam, equal. In, in Sanskrit, it's Sam. Meditation, balance meditation. Yay! Sam ten. Uh, that's different. Ah. Something is the Tibetan, and that some means to think. Okay, <clears throat> some like samapati or samadhi means equally placed, equally balanced meditation. Balance between what? Hasa, redeem thyself. Balance between desire of eating a hamburger or laziness because you actually ate the hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Perfect question, Michael. Answer. Uh, what's, the what's the Tibetan words? Do you know them? Lelo? Now. No. Um, du um, dul? Nope. Dullness? It's um, an excitement. Gupa for excitement? For overexcitement? Kupa, yeah. Kupa? And I forgot. Um, but it sounds like like laziness, no? Chingwa. Uh, so what Lelo? Lelo? Lelo. If you have Lelo, you you never meditated. It's the first problem of meditation. Right? Yeah. That's that's it. Which that's has that's four it. solutions. Lelo. Okay. So, but Nyamdu means together as a adjectival clause. I don't know. Nyamdu. Okay. That just means together. So ninyamdu means both of us together, right? It just means both or something like that. Okay. And pep, what's pep? What do you us? Oh. <laughs> go? Yeah, go. And honorific go. That's the thing. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing you need to know. In Tibetan, I think they have this pretty big in Spanish. In English, we don't really have it as separate words. Um, they have the imperative case, which is called kulsik. Kulsik. Kul means to impel or to force or something, to push. Tsik, what does tsik mean? Tsik. To impute? No, that means, that's da. Um, Sick means a word. It's my name. Uh, Tibetan. If you put a S on the end, I think it means verse. Yeah. But T S I G, I forget if there's an owl on it. Hold on. Let me just double check because I don't want to give you wrong information. I think there's no owl. Yeah, there's no owl. Yeah. So it's just Tsagi 
T T dot tick. Something in the chat. We have. Um, yes, Hasso. And Ina got the answer for a word. <laughs> I just saw it. Good job, Ina. Sorry about your internet. If it gets better, please let's see your lovely face. Um, okay. So Nyamdu means together. And so Pep means go, but Pep do is like slight imperative case. Like, let's go. I'll give anyone $50 if they tell me what is put on the end of a word, usually for a stronger imperative case. Why? No, what? I think Ina wrote it. <clears throat> oh, I forgot Ina was in class. <laughs> 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 Let's see. No, she's wrong. Yay! Uh, uh, chick, 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 or chick uh, can be put on the end. Those usually mean a, but they can also mean imperative after a verb. Um, I don't know about dong. It usually means and or first or something. I don't know if it is imperative. Um, okay. Uh, but let me show you this dictionary thing for imperative case because you need it in Tibetan. Um, okay, here is, I'll show you. Okay, here is a random Tibetan verb. I do not know this verb. Apparently it means to destroy, okay? So here's the verb. Read this perfectly, Oscar. Lokpa. Perfect. Perfect. Woo. Okay. okay. <laughs> no money for that. You're supposed to know that. Tadepa uh, means that it is a transitive verb. Okay. That means uh, that it needs an object to be understood. Um, to, it needs an object to be used in a sentence. Uh, hopefully, I didn't mix that up with intransitive which I do sometimes. Anyway, the way the Great Dictionary, which this text is, puts them is, these are the conjugations, right? Or, excuse me, tenses. This is past tense, right? Lock. This is future tense, which is also the same in this case. It's not always gonna be the same, but it is in this case. And this lock with an S, no pa at the end, is the kulsik, is the imperative case, right? Is that common to add an S for the imperative case? Um, I think it is actually. Um, it's not like a rule, but I think it's pretty common. Um, and adding a Pao, excuse me, yeah, adding Pao for the, uh, future and past are also quite, um, quite common. I figured some things out and made some money <laughs> from that. <laughs> Uh, Paul with a sa head letter, Paul with a ra head letter, and so forth. Do you want to you want to check, Hasa? You, you want to show you how you can check? Since I spent years and completely standardized this text, we can see exactly how many imperative cases there are with the s in this whole book. You want to see? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you exactly how many verb forms there are. <clears throat> there's 730. Okay, so the 730 verbs illustrated. This is the dictionary you have been doing? Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Okay, here's what the S. Half of them, the imperative ends in an S. 352. See? Lop. Lom. What's lom? Lom? Yes. You're required to know this <laughs> if you have certain vowels. I don't know, but I will check. This is delusions of grandeurs. Do not have delusions that you are a yogi when you are not. Uh, how can you tell? Uh, ask your llama. <laughs> He'll tell you right away or she'll tell you right away. Ask your girlfriend. <laughs> she'll tell you. <laughs> she already is telling you. You're just not paying attention. Okay. 
um, and so forth. Here's long, which means to rise or something. Yeah, here to stand up. Ooh, a mistake. Okay, that's the imperative. Good question, Hasso. And you got a good answer, so. <clears throat> Due to the work of the inputters and me, <laughs> in this case. Don't have delusions of man, man. And also don't discount yourself. All right? You gotta do both. You gotta do both. So we cannot say that this is like a rule, right? Just yeah. adding an asa at the end? Yep, yep. Can't can't can't. But you can use it as a hint in class to make some money. <laughs> Not my class. I don't give that much money. Okay. So, but this is the mild imperative, Pepto. All right. And there is a mild imperative in Tibetan. I don't know it that well. But mild imperative. Yeah. It, this is like saying like Vamanos, like, right? Yeah. Wait. Um you can say Vamanos, right? And you can say um what's the other one? Um, and Vamos. Huh? Huh? And the what would be what in would the be in imperative? imperative. Come on, let's, Come on, go. let's go. Vámonos, so um, I keep. <laughs> Maybe vámonos is more imperative than vamos. Right. Vam vamos is more casual, I guess. Vamos. Y vamos. So this would be like vamos in Spanish. And vámonos, like vámonos, like let's go, would be a stronger imperative. Mm. Right? I mean, you know, if your mom is like, I'm else. you're like, oh, okay, right? Or whoever. <laughs> okay, you get it? Okay, the Spanish help, because in English, um, I mean, English, you would say, if you start saying, let's go, okay, that's strong imperative. If you say, uh, mild imperative in English would be more like a question, are you ready? <laughs> Can we go now? You know, that would be kind of the gradations, depending I on your tone. I have struggled a lot understanding that word. What's that? I have struggled a lot in English understanding that. Like people is like, they say, do you want to do this and that? And it seems that they are asking if you want, but they are actually <laughs> requesting if you can do it. Oh yeah, well, that's a whole other thing. Do you want to take the 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 dog for a walk? And you're like, <laughs> oh, no, no. not at all. <laughs> but they are actually saying, "Can you please take the dog for a walk?" Right. That's a whole other thing. That's your karma, bro. You got to work on that. Uh, and I'm, am I Pedma? I forget. Uh, it's been so long. Hey, what? Hey, what? Wait, no, no. And this thing. Uh, la young, oh, la, la, la young, nah. Yeah, la young, nah. What does young usually mean? Wait, Lydia, what's young mean? I think mm, young, 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 isn't it come? Yes, exactly. Very good. Um, there's a famous word in, um, uh, oh my God, I can't remember. <clears throat> in the seven step cause and effect method of achieving bodhicitta, uh, they use Jung. Uh, my brain, I can check, but it'll be annoying. Anyway, that's the, so in this case, um, la yunga just means all right, but literally it means to come, like I'll come <laughs> or something like that, or coming, right? All right, uh, Lydia, you want to try? You want to be Pema? Okay. Um, Ina, do you have audio or or no audio? She might not have audio. 
Let's try. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. <clears throat> I got your I, I got your message, Oscar. Don't worry. I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i figured it out eventually uh okay so lydia will be pedma and ina will be kelsan you ready lydia okay okay go ahead kelsan la um Keran kapar I don't it doesn't sound right. That's right. Keran kapar. Yeah. Yeah, but my, the next thing I'm gonna try and say. Pe peka? Pep pep kali pep pepka. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Um what's it mean? Translate the whole thing. <clears throat> Holy Gilsang. Um Kel Kel Arter Kelsang. They use a G but it's Kel. Okay. Holy Kelsang. Mm -hmm. Um where are you going? Perfect. You know, please. Gan Tromla Jorgi Yin. Mm-hmm. Keran Tapar Kepka. Perfect. Translate please. I'm going to the market. Where do you go? Yeah. Where, oh, no. Pep went? No, where are you going? It's still going. Same question. Going, okay. Mm -hmm. Went would be chin, chin by yin, right? Chin by yin, pe. Where you? Oh, go? yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Lydia, por favor. Ma Yang from la Jogiyin. Yeah, na yang, perfect pronunciation as written. What what would you say if we pronounce it more in the colloquial way? What yang? Yeah. I don't know. Na ye. Na ye from la Okay. Mm -hmm. And it can be dro it's drogi yin or droi yin. We talked about it some classes ago. I don't know if you guys remember, but <clears throat> it can be drogi yin or droi yin. Um, it's interchangeable. Which one should it be? Drogi yin or droi yin? Droi yin. Yeah. Why, Ina? Because of the ending. Yeah, ends in a vowel, but it's drogi yin. And that's the one I hear more commonly. So it's just another colloquial thing that happens. <clears throat> so <clears throat> don't fight it. Uh, Kelsang, your turn. It's Ina. Ina's Kelsang. <laughs> Uh, Chena, mm -hmm. uh, ye, na ni, uh, yam to, mm -hmm. hep, to. Nice, good. Uh. Good parsing too. It should be nga, ni, nyamdu, pepto, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, this kind of particle, tu, often fall, it makes it an adverb, right? Or something like that. Together. Equal, equally, right? The ly in English, this tu is like the ly in English. Uh, but it's like one, this is one word, namdu. Okay. Um, okay, Lydia.
La Kyung Na. Yeah, La Kyung Na. Um, this is an interesting thing in Tibetan. <clears throat> this Na, these kind of Na's uh, will follow an, a, a word that ends in an NG sound. And there's various incidences like that. I don't know that it has a direct translation, but it's kind of like a emphasizer, intensifizer or something. Here, I'll show you. I know you don't care, but I'm still gonna show you. <laughs> There's a way to show you using my dictionary. Look, NG, NG. See, look at this. Langye, lingye. This is some kind of, I don't know this, um, this phrase, but it's some kind, it's, it's gonna be some, look, I'll tell you without, without, without knowing it. It's gonna be something that means like something extremely something, beautiful or amazing or quirky in some kind of way. Because these nyes, which follow this nya at the end are, are some kind of intensifizer. So this is gonna be some adjective or adverb that means something that in a strong way. That's my guess, okay, you wanna see? Let's see. Here we go. Hmm. Oh, floating, swinging, or swaying. So it just means like back and forth. In some, but I think it's in some kind of beautiful way, like white clouds, like fluttering, like, like that kind of energy. And you'll see that often. Like something, like when they're describing something beautiful, they'll use this kind of format. <clears throat> we had it in the Medicine Buddha um, Sutra as well. <clears throat> it was like Klame, Klangme, Klingme, or something like that. And it just meant amazing, beautiful, oh my God. So, um, but you can check the sutra and the recordings for the full translation. All right. But isn't that different word? What? The, the na and the nge. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different use of the same principle. It's, it's mm -hmm. just different. Yeah, it's a different spelling, but the same principle. Yeah. So. I don't know. I think Sunam dropped his call again. I would ask him more about it, but I think it's pretty quirky in the language. And I, I don't know if he'll even know because it's one of those quirky things. But he might because he's very smart and knows Tibetan quite well. All right. So, mm, any questions about the dialogue? It's pretty straightforward, right? All right. Let's do it in reverse. You ready? Paso, translate this in Tibetan. Unmute thy microphone. Kel Kelsangla Kerang Kapar Pep Pepka. Good. And that P in the kapar, it, 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 it's softer for some reason, no logical reason. It ends up saying, sounding like kapar, kapar. Kapar jogi yin. Where are you going? Kapar jogi yin. Jogi? Yogi? Jogi yin. Jogi yin. Ah, but I have to use it honorific or not necessarily? You do. I'm just giving an example. Uh, okay. In this part, it, the, the honorific is used. But if we're just. Kapar jogi yin. Kapar pep. Just pepka. Yeah, kab kabar pepka. Kabar pepka. Yeah, kabar. And like that's a, that's the it ends in R, so I don't kabar, right? But I don't say karar either. It's like kabar. kabar. It's it's somewhere in between, kabar pepka, you know, or a slight roll. In my experience and what I've learned and how I've heard it. All right, uh, Oscar, translate this one. Na, yep. Na trolma, tromla, tromla, troyi yin. Perfect. 
or na tromla na tromla peb kai yin na i don't know drogi yin or droi yin ah okay you said droi yin which is perfect drogi yin ah the pronunciation okay yeah it's yeah it's just the particle um where are you going say that one keran keran kabar pepka perfect done um rivas yeah. na no. pep say also first um uh, you say tambien in tibetano <laughs> Nain? Yang. Yang or ye? Uh, yang. Yeah, yang. Nai. Nai. Ah, yeah, that was that you said. Nai ye? Yep, nai ye. Nai ye, pep. Um, trom la. You have to say, okay, let's break it down. First, you're going to do the object. So, where are we going to? Trom la. Exactly. So, na yang. So, this is all word order stuff. Now insert the market, say it. Na yang. Na yang. Na ye tromla. Now say the verb. Ah, okay. Na ye tromla. Yin. Jogi yin. Jogi yin. Yeah, going, right? Ah, jogi yin. Jogi yin. Yeah. Na ye tromla, jogi yin. Perfect. Na ye trom. Na ye tromla, jogi yin. Good. Um. Eh. Did I? You want to try this one? Oh gosh. Um. Go slow. There's hints in the notes here. You need them. Do you remember what I say in that case? No. Okay. It's Chenna. It's just the, you have to memorize that one. Chenna. Nga so. Trom la drogi yin. No. How do you say together, like in meditation? How do you say equal or? <clears throat> the stuff we talked about before, the samas stuff. Yeah. Do you remember? No. Nyam do. Yeah, <clears throat> it's most famous in direct perception of emptiness. J top yeshe is after, but during is nyam shak. Right, Hasso? <laughs> okay, good. So, okay. And it's two. You say two together. So, how do you say two in, in Tibetan, Lydia? Um, ni? Good. So ni nyam du. Um, so uh, and then okay, chena. Okay, let's do it slow. In that case, say that part. Chena. Good. Um, I. Na. Two. Ni. Together. Namso. Namdu. Namdu. Um, and they use a mild imperative. I don't know if you remember. So now we use the honorific of to go. What's that one? Pepka. Pep. Pep. Uh, Pepka would be the question. Uh, uh, that would be going. That's not the imperative though. But good, it is basically that. Do you remember the imperative in this case? No. To, tap to. Okay. Okay, so let's try the whole thing together. I'll just say the words one by one and you give me the Tibetan, you ready? Okay. Okay, in that case. Um, I forget. Chena. Chena. 
Okay, good. Let's do it again. In that case. Jena. I. Nga. Two. Ni. Together. Nang. Nang something. Yep. Namdu. Namdu. Perfect. Go. Imperative. Pepto. Perfect. I think. Yay. <laughs> I'm glad I remembered it. Good. Now, I, <laughs> Juan Hasso raised his hand, is what Zoom is telling me. What is it, Juan Hasso? Brief question about the question about what is your name? Is there another way to say it other than Kerang Sure? Kerang Sure is who are you? Mm -hmm. What is your name is um um Kerang Keranki um Keranki Mingla Karire uh, uh how are you called or uh no that's what is your name literally Keranki Mingla Karire um but there's other ways you want to see them Keranki Mingla hold on I'll I'll show them to you and then put them in the chat ah okay great. Uh, there's another one that is, is how you're called. It's like Keranki um, Ming Serwa, but I forget how to say it exactly, and I don't want to say it wrong. Um, yeah. my, my aunt was asking me. I told her, she was like, what's new? And I said, I'm taking Tibetan classes. And then she started asking me, oh, how did you say this? And how do you say that? So I promised her I will figure it out. Oh, good. That is very good karma. Okay, this is the learning practical Tibetan um, document that the angel Andriana helped me make, and then the angel Lydia helped me make better. Okay. Um, okay, so I put name. Here it is, what is your name? Yeah, I said it right. Oh my God, that's weird. Kiranki um, Mingla. Oh, Kareyin, not Karede. But I guess Karede would be good too because it's Kerang. It's one of those anticipatory ones, right? Um, so that's right. So literally, your name, La, what is? Okay. There's another way. You want the other way? It's more like um, como te llama, like how you called, right? Is there a way to get this document or not? Is there a way you have to, you have to, you have to pull it off my computer somehow. You want to try? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can... This one I'm still working on. I will send it to you. Just don't distribute it because it's not, done i don't know when it's gonna be done because i'm using a different book now um I should just you, are, you are not using this anymore it didn't work or the book has a lot of mistakes in it so i'm a little hesitant you know uh, so this is a book i thought you say andriana and, and lydia help you to make it it is it's the book typed out Ah, wow. The whole audio. Okay. Yeah, it took a few years. Um, so you can say, like, as in, what is this called? You can say, Dila Carecer, right? Um, which literally means, what is this called? Um, what is the name of this festival? Tuchen, which means festival. Tuchen ki ming, Carecer, same thing, right? So... Uh, I don't know. That's all I got. I thought there was another one. I'll triple, triple, triple check. Here's Ming. It's used 22 times. Who's that? Nicole? Hi. And Lulu. Lulu? Is that a tabby cat? He's a calico. Oh, calico. Female? Yes. Yeah, that many colors, usually a female. Mm -hmm. Likes to eat and sleep? 
Exactly. <laughs> How could I tell? <laughs> she wants to say Tashi Delay. Wow, wow, wow. Hi. <laughs> Bye, Nicole. Um, I think that's all I got for you, bro. No, that's awesome. I would say Karanki Mingla Kari. Definitely, I'd be able to tell my aunt. <laughs> yes, good. Okay. I, th I thought there was another way, but that's all I got. Um, this one, yeah, I made this document because it's in the book, but there's no PDF for the, well, there is one now. <laughs> we made one of those too. Uh, there's no, um, and I, I, we put it, I put it all in ACIP. I did that part. So that's really helpful. Um, and this is the best resource for colloquial Tibetan I know of on earth, actually, because I don't know of like any other. <laughs> so it's actually really helpful. All right, cool. Back to the book. Um, Lydia just finished that thing. How do you say all right, Ina? Yeah, yeah there's, there's a few ways. I mean, you can say lasso usually, but I think in this case, how do you say it? What do we have in the dialogue? Do you remember? Mm, no. Uh, la, uh, la yunga. Meaning like, okay, I'll mm. come or I'm coming or something. In Spanish, they say boy, right? Like coming, which literally means going, but in English, we say coming. Um. And we go over of, on that one, on La Yonga. La Yonga, yeah. La you? Yeah, La Yonga. Coming. What Yong, yong mean? Means. It means to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, this is what we just did, okay? Um, we just did that. We just did that. New vocab. Please study the, if you do those like four exercises over and over and backwards and forwards and everything, this will become very easy because it's only like a couple phrases and it's not much. So here are the names of a lot of things, a lot of places and such. Um, let's go over it because some of these are going to be very helpful. Some of them are more exclusive to the Tibetan world because of their neighbors and their cultural, you know, places where Tibetan culture is. Um, is. Tibetan is spoken in seven, seven countries um like natively um because a lot of those country borders are due to like wars and colonialism or imperialism and they're not based upon the peoples that were there right so the lines that you know created pakistan and india for instance um were kind of arbitrary um by the british right in the 40s so there's there's tibetans in pakistan tibetan speakers in pakistan india um, Nepal, Bhutan, China, of course, and some, some other places. That might be it. I don't know. Um, and there's different dialects, right? Um, some, <laughs> yeah, also, <laughs> there's a diaspora. I'm, that's why I said natively, right? Um, they're all over the world. I'm sure there's, there's Tibetans in Switzerland and Germany and Canada and all over, right? Not that many, actually. I've heard the numbers actually only like 150,000 outside of Tibet. 
Um, I don't know if that means their children too, but, and about 6 million in Tibet, which is now considered politically a part of China, right? Okay, so here we go. This is good things to know, just place names and such. Let's begin. We've had this a few times. Uh, so let's just keep going in order. Um, wait one second. Okay. Um, Rivas, read the first four. All right? Yeah. Uh, China? China? Read it. Yeah, cha? Yeah, nah. Yeah? Yeah. Kya? Kya na? Okay. Kya na? What's kya mean? Kya Anybody? Quick. White. No. The other part. Black. Black. No. No? Ya means wide. Yatso, wide lake, meaning the ocean. Ya nak, right? A place that is where they all wear black, right? The wide black. Exactly. Widely black, okay? Nak is and black. Okay. Read the next one, Mr. Rivas. Uh, the same. Ya gar. Yeah, Yagar. What? What's that mean? Yagar. The gray gar. <laughs> What's gar or carpo? What is carpo? I don't know. Let me check. Oscar. White. Yes. If you go to carpo over there, Alex. Oh. It's B K A. Well, everybody wears white. Yeah, because everyone wore white. Um. What do we just learn cock usually means? Dance. Yeah. Wow. You remember what happened like five minutes ago? Did you look it up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's my transmission? Can you guys hear me? Okay. I, I'm cutting off, but I don't know if it's me or you. Okay, yeah, it's acting a little weird. Okay, next one, Mr. Poo. 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 Um, I guess some people do say poo. Poo. Like, um, like some do. What, what does poo mean? But book? It means to yell. Why, Hasa? Ah, <laughs> that's funny. Because I think it has to do with it's so close to India that if you yell, you they can hear you. Yay! I knew Hasa knew that one. Hasa likes those kinds of ones. Yeah. <laughs> Hasso remembers those. That's good. Okay, next one, Mr. Rivas. What? No, hey, no, Rivas no. Why do these look weird? What's going on? Canada. Uh, because uh, I don't know. I don't see anything weird. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I don't know because... Um, What's weird about them? Anybody? They don't exist, maybe like in as a word. They are mirror, mirror looking. Mirror, yeah, they're backwards. Ah, yeah. I'm, and why is that? Because they're trying to make a sound that they don't really have in Tibetan, right? So they they do this with foreign words sometimes. They they make them backwards. Liter I mean, actually, what it should do is retroflex. Yeah. If it's if it's Sanskrit, it'd be retroflex. So it'd be, uh, Kannada. Kannada. Exactly. Yes. Kannada. Um, I don't know if that's how people actually say it. I doubt it. From what I've heard from Sunam, they just say Canada. Like, <laughs> but it's supposed to represent some foreign sound. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Pretty good job, Rivas. Um, <laughs> no cheating in the dictionary. Uh, Hasso, you read these four. So it's Inji Lumpa. Okay, what's significant about this word, Inji? That it sounds a little bit like England. That's true. Perfect. It's supposed to sound like England. But why is the word Inji significant otherwise? What else can it mean? Ah, uh, it can mean foreign, foreigner, foreigner. Yeah, for some reason, I, be, I mean, the English were some of the first Westerners to come to Tibet, right? Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt made a movie, right? Seven Years in Tibet. Yeah. He, wait, was he German now or English in that movie? I forget. No, I think he was uh, from Sweet, Sweetland or Sweet. Austria. 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 Okay, I never saw that movie, <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, the English were the, some of the first to come. Um, and so I guess for some, because of that, you know, Inji became Westerner, even though it specifically refers to English. Just like cabron means goat, but it became to mean my homie or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with goats if you yeah. say cabron, right? <laughs> I mean, it could, but. Right, or Cholo, uh, right? You're not calling me an ancient Aztec breed of dog, right? Yeah. You're calling me like a gangster or something. Language, that's what happens. Okay. Inji, inji Lungpa. What's Lungpa? Lungpa is some people who come from the wind. No. Ah, uh, no. Uh, not that long. No, I don't know. I don't know. But that Lung. is interesting. Why is Lung? Lung means country, if you don't know. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Right. But why is Lung, which means transmission, it doesn't mean wind. Mm -hmm. Lung means wind. Ralata la shabku lu. Lung. R L U N G. What else can that mean, Oscar? With the rata? Yes. Perfectly asked. With lung can mean prana, wind. Yep, yep. Or being lung, lungiado. Yep, perfect. Or that's it? Yeah, sometimes it refers specifically to the prana vayu as well. It means prana, prana vayu. Uh, I think it can refer to the vata dosha too, because vata basically means wind, right? Um, Pranavayu is the one, the, how do you say, life force? The main life wind, right? That's the one that usually goes up and apana usually goes down, right? And then you want to switch them in yoga, right? Invert the winds. You think vayu is related to vida in Spanish? Vida? Um, like no, life? it's related to viento. It's related to vente. It's related to, it means wind. Vayu, okay, yeah. Prana Wait, vayu. What did you say window in Espanol? Ventana. Yeah, ventana, window, same. Uh, I thought ventana was because to bear. No, ben, window, same in German. Fenster. Window, uh -huh. same, exact. Just parallel in each language. Sorry, isn't it Veda means life? Like Ayurveda? Yeah, Veda, no, the Veda in Ayurveda means to know, ah, okay. which comes into the video to see. Jiva means life, which comes into um, Spanish as Vida, which means life. Wow, okay, you guys are stretching, stretching my etymology here. Uh, Geshe taught me all of that. Okay, <clears throat> next one, Mr. Hasso. I'll be Jarman. Uh, Jarman. Yeah, Jarman. Good. Jarman. Perfect. Next. Um, Germany. Okay. Parin. Si. Parin. Si. Yeah. Perfect. 
next um tere hmm tere jung oh what, what's this one that's tere tere mm hmm tere um jung tere jung Yep. Um, cool. Who's next? Oscar. What is Sikkim? Sikkim is a region of India. Okay. It's like, uh, you know, how India is like this big trapezoid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you're looking at the map, right? This west part. Mm -hmm. Now it comes off. Mm -hmm. Like Bangladesh is right here. They call them, the, these are called the seven sister states. And they have a different history than the, the main part of India. They, and there's a, there's a lot of Tibetan culture in those areas. And Sikkim is a place, it's close to Bhutan. And it's got different language and stuff. And so it's like a different area, but it's officially India, but it's not historically like Hindu and stuff. So. You can look at a map, but you don't care that much. Okay, next. Oscar. Drukul. Yeah, Drukul. What's Druk mean? This Druk. It's, is it like a Tulku? No, Tulku is a different. That's our Parata. Like to project or emanate. Nirmanakai. Um, this is truk. This means uh, uh, thunder. But it's referring to dragons. Yeah, because it was thought that the dragons were the ones making all the noise. Cool. Wait, hold on. Here we go. Ku tan flag. What do we have here? On the Bhutanese flag. Nagas. <laughs> Dragons, right? Nagas, yeah, because they make the they make the thunder sounds. So Jiu means country, the land of land of the dragon makers. I don't know why. Um, it might do with, have to do with storms there, but I'm not sure. Okay, next. Doje, Dorje, yep, Dorje Lung, Kiku, Kiku, yeah, Dorje Ling. So everyone's heard of Darjeeling, right? Like Darjeeling Express or Darjeeling the Tea, but it's a Tibetan yeah. word that got India or Englishified. I'm not sure what happened first. It's Dorje Ling. What's Ling mean? Lion? Mm -mm. That's Senge. Uh, Ling. Land? No. Yes, it means island. Mm. Uh, so, island of diamonds? Island of Vajras. The Isle of Vajras. I live in, I don't know. Vajra Thunders. I don't know. I don't know why I got that name or what it literally means. I don't know what it refers to, but you know, you know what Dorje can refer to. Uh, yeah, Ling Shi, right? What's Ling Shi? Ling Shi is not a story. Uh. She as Earth? Mm. 
mm -mm, different shoe. Four, the four oh, yeah, the islands or mm. continent. Yeah, same thing, right? That's the same link. Okay, just to connect it all for you. Uh, read the next part. Next word. Ladakh. Yeah, Ladakh. Ladakh. Hmm. And Ladakh or Ladakhi, uh, Lama, Lama John, Lama John Brady has gone there. I think some other people from the Sangha to preserve books. It's in India nowadays. And their Tibetan is different. They have Ladakhi, but they, they can still read scriptural Tibetan. So they're considered to, it's still considered Tibetan. Uh, but it's high in the mountains in Northern India. Okay, um, that one. Delhi. Yeah, Delhi. 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 And that's just a Tibetan version of the word, right? Yeah. All right. Ina. Here. Yeah, I'm okay. here. Okay, can you read these four, please? Yes. Dorje, uh, Dun? Den. Den, what higher? Yeah, what does Den mean? Anybody, please. Oh, I'm sorry, word. I have to uh, drop off. Uh, father of Bill passed away. No problem. Um, anybody? Then, what means, yeah. then means to sit. No, it doesn't mean to sit. What does it I mean? I know it means uh, the seat, like yeah. place. Yeah, like what phrase? Uh, shukten, shukten ja. Yeah, Shuktenja. What does that mean? Have you been sitting down well? No, Shuktenja Yupe means that. What does Shuktenja mean? It means sit down. Yeah, get cozy. Yeah, have a seat, relax. Exactly. Perfect. And what does Dorje Den mean? And why is it called that? And what is it in Sanskrit? Is where the diamond sat down where the diamond was realized who realized the diamond what is the diamond in this case the diamond is the mind of a buddha or the mind the diamond is the buddha yeah exactly the, yeah. the buddha achieved enlightenment under the bodhi tree yeah and they call it Dorje Den. And in Sanskrit? But uh, Vajra, Vajrasana. Yeah, Vajrasana. You make it a long A. When you combine short A and a long A, it's a long A. Vajrasana. Vajrasana. Yeah, Vajrasana, right? Why they change the name to Budgaya? Oh, I think Bodh is the same as Bodhi. Because that's in a state of India. What's that state called? It's probably the Hindi version of the same exact thing, but I don't know. I don't know what Gaia literally means. But Bodh does mean Bodhi, so the Bodhi tree. So I think it is an homage to the Lord Buddha. Um, what's the name of that state? I forget. It's the one above uh, West Bengal. Uh, my friend, I, have, I know someone from that state. Ugh, okay, we're gonna look at the Indian map. Anyway, at least I am. You wanna see, my, you wanna see this thing? Bihar. Yeah, Bihar state, yeah. Which means Bihar, like Vihari, which means like holy book, something you study. So, that state is interesting. You want to, let's find out what Bogai literally means. Here we go. Mm. 
Yeah, Bodhi, meaning enlightenment. Bodhi tree. What's the guy I mean, though? Hmm. I don't know, I might have to look at it some other time. Yeah, Bihar is from Bihari. Damn it. Bihari means holy place or holy text. Arrgh. Here it is in Sanskrit. Bimane Vala. I don't know what that means. Here we go. Oh, baby center. <laughs> um, one who spends time playfully? I don't think so. Ugh. If you ever ask me questions, this is what goes on. I'm looking at you three. <laughs> um, Bihari. Oh, it just means living place. I thought I meant holy place. Staying, being such a sojourn. Okay, it just means living place. But can, it does can also mean taking, oh, that's in Marathi. In Marathi, which is related to Sanskrit, it means to play or something. All right, that's enough of that. Yeah. I'll figure out guy later or something. I'm not promising anything though. All right, Oof. who's going? Whose turn is it? Oh, Ina had to leave. Rivas, you go. <sighs> Go. This what? One. How do you say the, ah this this one? Okay. Yeah, Hlasa. Hlasa. Yes. What did the authors perfectly do? And what did they not? Put, put first the la and then ratak. Ha. La hatak. La hatak is when it's down. Yep. Hatak ha. I ha. know. Ah, la hatak. Yeah. La hatak. Ha. Okay. What mistake did they not make? And put the ha as a. How do you say when it's up the la? Above the la? They did not mix up transliteration and transpronunciation because if you transliterate this, it's L H A, right? Yeah. It is pronounced H L A. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. a bunch of English speakers didn't know that. And now everyone pronounces the capital of Tibet as Lhasa uh, when it is in fact Lhasa, which, como se dice Lhasa en español? I think I've never heard someone saying it. Los Angeles, California. Yay! Los Angeles. Ah, okay. The city of the angels. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Sa. Sa just means place. Hla means angel, deva, holy being. Okay. Your lama. LA. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, it's still LA. You could say. Plaza <laughs> LA. <laughs> I like that hustle. Okay, keep going, Rivas. Okay, can, can, can't. Ah. Can, 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 Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm what's trying weird? not to read. Yeah. What's weird about this, though? Katmandu. What's Eta? weird about this? Yeah. That it's not, it, I've never seen it as a, like, for a suffix. 
Yeah. Ta should not be pronounced as a suffix. Mm -hmm. But because this is a foreign word, because this is the capital of what? Or where? Kathmandu. Bhutan? No. Nepal. Nepal. So I, I guess it's a Nepali word and then put in Tibetan letters, right? So. Okay. Just like the word what is the, the D is pronounced when transliterated from another language. And, uh, Pema, P Pedma, Pedma. Uh, yeah. Right? Padma, right? Padma. I know that was like an hour and a half ago. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you guys. All right. So those are all like kind of place names. Now we're moving on to more general words. Read this one, Rivas. That is Lop. Lop. Kia. Lop. Lopkia. Lopja. Loptra. Lop Loptra. Loptra. Or. La tra. Yep. Lop tra or lap tra. Lap. Lap to like. It just means it means the practices, right? So it's like learning or something. I it's also related to the word to speak. Um I think it's a different spelling. I think a practice is B S L A B and speaking is just L A B and then a student is S L O B or S L A B, right? What's a lopun? Teacher or master. Perfect. That's exactly what it is. Good. And when you say pun after um, a word, it means some kind of leader. You want me to show you? Watch. Sure. Yes. All right. Because what's a depun? Do you know that one? Yeah, it's a master of the five arts of ancient India, no? No, that's pension. Pen, Pancha Chen, Pancha Chempo. It's Pandita, Pandita Chempo. Pension Lama, Pension. Uh, this is. Definitely an, an, a master, a scriptural master. Nope, a captain of a ship. Oh. Yeah. Just there. Captain, hmm? sorry, days mm, ship. I don't know what day is by itself. Why is this not? Oh, I'm in the wrong document. Oh, so excuse me. No, I spelled it wrong. Okay, here we go. Lopun, what's a lake lopun? Oh, this is. Oh, this is a different kind of lay. Do you guys know that one? Karma? Huh? Karma? Yeah, this means uh, monasterial rites, R-I-T-E-S. Oh. Yeah, it's hard. We had it in um, Allison's class quite a bit. There's the, there's the lepun, the one, who, the one who's in charge of the ceremonies. You need one to like ordain monks and stuff and nuns. Okay. Uh, here we go. Same. Supervisor. Lepun. Uh, trim pun. What's trim? So trim. Morality. Perfect. So a trim pun is a. Um, a judge. A judge. The one in charge of the laws, or the morality, or the, what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um. Mock. You know mock. It means a soldier. How do you say? Okay. Soltero? Soldado. Soldado. Oh, soldado. Exactly. Soltero means alone, right? Single. Yeah. Soltero. Soltero. Soldado, soldado, soltero. Yeah, it's lonely soldier. <laughs> yeah, soldado. Thank you. Uh, so, Makpun is like a general, I guess. You see? It's actually a synonym for the planet Mars. <laughs> oh, cool. Pikmar. 
the red planet, right? Uh, Samikma. And that's why Tuesday is called Samikma is Tuesday in, in our Tibetan. Right? Oh, I remember I remember a question, Profe. What is it? Is it in Tibetan the same days as in the rest of the world? Yeah, they use the they use a Tibetan translation of the English, you know, it's actually the English, well, Roman, I think it came from Rome originally. Rome and Norse combined, right? So so they took that like 1000 years ago or so. No, I don't think so. Probably But what was before? I mean, because oh, my they use a lunar calendar. Just oh, like okay. So I don't they don't know. they didn't have like Monday, Tuesday or No, they have a very complicated system of months and the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, the day they have okay. like a whole other thing which is very complicated and I've learned just little bits from this dictionary and translating and being in various Geshe classes, like mixed nut classes where we have to get into complicated things like that. But and I made a I made an addendum to this dictionary just on the months. <laughs> For fun, uh, if that's what you call fun, I do. Um, so, okay, so Pun, so yeah, so if you look, I mean, you can do it that way too. You want to know the days of the week in Tibetan? Yes. Okay, how do you say sun in Tibetan? Sun? Yeah, like the sun. Uh, ni. Yeah, good. Nima. Nima? Yep, Nima. Look, is so it not... feminine or no? It's not feminine. It's just, just a particle. Maybe they think of the sun as feminine, but I'm not sure. Here it is. Sun Nima. Okay, this is Sunday. Okay, how do you say moon? So Monday, moon day. Um, Dawa. Yep, spell it. Uh, sa la tak. Sa la tak. Um, pa. You can say salata, salata and da wa. Uh -huh. Salata and da oh, yeah, wa. Yeah, there you go. This sa, uh, this means celestial body. It means the thing in the sky. It doesn't this. It, you can call it planet, but it's not quite planet because it can refer to a moon and it can refer to a sun. So neither of those things are planets, right? But it's like that thing up there it's in the sky. Celestial body is the most accurate English translation. Uh, okay, we had we just had Mikmar. ¿Cómo se dice Tuesday en español? Tuesday, Martes. Yeah, Mars. 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 Right? Yeah. There it is. Mars. Ah. And in English, why is has anything to do with Tuesday? Tu is from Tyr, which is the Norse god of war, which is the translation of the Latin uh, yeah. uh, Mars, which is the Roman god of war. Wow, that's amazing. Which is a translation. Well, that's where you get martial, like martial arts. Amazing. Fighter, fighting, which is a translation from the Greek, uh, which is Aries, right? The Greek god of war, which is why Mars is represented. Mars represents Aries, the sign Aries, right? Astrologically. Okay. Okay. Now, what's um? How much did you say Wednesday in Espanol? Miércoles. Why? Mier. Mercurio. Mercury. Yeah, perfect. Well, okay. But then why is why is Mercury important? Because it's after Mars? <laughs> no, Mercury is the messenger for the sun. Messenger, yeah. Because Mercury is the planet so close to the sun, it's always revolving close. Right? Because it's the closest planet to the sun. So that's the head god. In English it's Wednesday which is Woden or Odin's day, which is the highest God in Norse mythology, right? 
So the Tibetan becomes highest, which is. Uh, so Mercury is supposed to be the highest god in the Latin mythology. It's something like that. It's like the messenger for the sun. Like, yeah, it's not exactly that, but it's something like that. Mm, it's loose. Okay. It's loose. But Odin or Wo Odin is also Woden. Those are two pronunciations of Odin, which is the high god in Norse mythology, right? Mm -hmm. Also, Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Chris Helmsworth's dad in, uh, <laughs> in, in, Thor, in Thor movies. OK, that's Lahakma. So Hlak means highest, right? Or higher, or something like that. All right? Hlak may, nothing higher. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, what's Thursday? Jupiter. Yeah, or or Jove, both. What's Jove? Jove is another name for Jupiter. Ja Jehovah? No, Jehovah is the Hebrew, the trans, the pronunciation of the Hebrew tetragrammaton, the four letters that, of God that you're not supposed to pronounce as a word, but they did as <laughs> Jehovah. That's a whole other talk. Um, Jove. In English, they say they Jove. In Espanol, como se dice Jove? Jueves? Yeah. <laughs> Jueves. Jove. I don't know what's Jove. What's Jove? I just told you, Jove is Jupiter. OK. In what language? Latin. Uh, Jove. If you speak Spanish, you just speak slang ass Latin. <laughs> Seriously, Spain was one of the first places conquered by the Romans outside of Rome, outside of the Italian peninsula. And they spoke Latin in a funny way. And that went on for, that's been going on for about 2,500 years. And so their Jove sounds like, yes. <laughs> it is, it's just true, same with French. They conquered Gaul like 2,000 years ago, etc. You know, study your Roman history. Oh, look, thank you. It went to it automatically. Sup, Portuba, Portubu, Portubu. That's that's Thursday. Jupiter. Frida. Portubu, huh? Frida in the northern mythology. Thor. Not Frida. No, we're on Thursday, Thor. Ah, I thought we were on Friday already. No, it's on Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Yeah, the day. He got to have his own. Yeah, but Friday, Friday is named after who in Norse? Frida. Friga, not Frida. Yeah. Yeah, Friga. In Espanol? Viernes. Venus? In Latino? Venus? Venus. Yeah. Venus. Venus is Venus. Venus Day. So, uh, I always mix it up. Sapasan? I think it's Sapasan. <laughs> Let me see if I can spell it right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. I, for some reason, I've memorized this many times, but I mix up Friday and Saturday. I don't know why. Okay, I was right, this is Friday. So the other one is Saturday. Anyway, what does Saturday mean? Saturno. Yeah, exactly, Saturn's day, right? Um, which is like the Grim Reaper, Kronos in, uh, in, in like the timekeeper, I don't know. It's like the end, it's the last day of the week. How do you say it? In, in Tibet. Sapasang, Sapurba, Sapasang, Sapempa, Sapempa. Woo, I remembered. I even know how to spell it. Not like that. Sapempa. Saturday. And that's Pempa is Saturn. All right. I taught you. 
A word. Hey, what? Is that a funny, funny question? From you? That's weird. Yeah, and because <laughs> about all this thing about planets, and don't ask me how, it's long story, but I connected with the vaccine. Did you oh, go wow. to the vaccine? Do you have a good conspiracy theory for us? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to know it. No, but do you got your vaccination or no? Yeah, I got it. Okay. That's <laughs> all that I needed to know. Okay. Not fear of affecting your DNA and stuff? Um, not any more than I fear death by another 8 million ways that are possible every second because I understand some sorrow. Um, <laughs> so and whatever. Any brand? Hmm? Pfizer or anyone? Moderna. You recommend Moderna? No, that's the one I got. I don't recommend anything. Okay. I'm going to do the last part. Uh, so, Sakang. So, Sa means to eat. Uh, and Kang means house. So, food, food house. Okay. Monastery is Gumpa, but it often gets mispronounced as what? Gompa. Gompa. Yeah. I think Tibetans even say Gompa as Gompa. And then people think the Gom means what? Meditation. Yeah, because Gom does mean meditation, but Gompa, it's Gompa, not Gompa. At least it was. Now I guess it's Gompa by default, because that's what people say. And that's what happens with language. This is Chong Kang. What's Kang? House. Yes, perfect. What's Song? Supplies? It's to, it's to sell something. Uh, so the, the house of selling is a? Store. Yeah. Tienda, right? Tienda. Okay. And then what's Kang? It's not a okay. trick question. House. It's house, house again. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot of things are going to be like that. Post office is... Ja Kong. Okay, there's places are gonna be have Kong on the end. Um guest house is like Dong Kong. Okay. Chung Kong. Anyway, what's men? Medicine. Oh, maybe to heal. Medicine. Medicine? Yeah, yeah good. So men Menpa is a doctor, right? I medicine or men is medicine. And Men Kong is a place where you get the medicine, right? Hospital. And they, they'll they end up saying me in Tibetan. Me, they don't say men. At least some dialects don't say men. They say me. me I don't know if they say me kang. Men kang. I feel like they say men kang, but they say me for medicine. Anyway, <laughs> uh, home is nang. What does nang literally mean? Like inner? Yeah, beautiful, perfect. Like in, like where you go in, right? Your home. Okay. Mm -hmm, What's, mm -hmm. Who's a nangpa? Uh, I guess a monk. Not no. exactly. Mm -mm. That's a trapa. Householder? Nope. That's a kimse. I'm not. Um, that's a kim. Kimpa? Uh, a Buddhist, maybe? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe you should know how to say Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> Insider. I, I don't know. I want it to mean, because we think, because we know what mainly should be viewed as inside, okay? Mm. But I think it means we're Buddhists and all the other people aren't. So we're the insiders. <laughs> or I guess it's empty. It could be both, right? Cause, cause a non-Buddhist is a chirolpa, which means outsider, right? So, on pure one, <laughs> it just means outsider. It's just, it's just... <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know this word. I guess it's the honorific. I've heard it, but I don't really know. It. How do you, how do you say that? Oh yeah, I hear it. I heard it on the tape. I heard it on the tape a lot. Pronounce it. Simkang. Yeah, Simkang. 
Mm-hmm. It would be la- it would be your llama's house or something. Okay. Gesh uh Geshele Simkong, Geshele's house. Right? You know, um Nye Nye Nang, my home. Okay. All right, uh, a few more things and we'll wrap up. Um, let's just do this last part. Additional vocabulary, not recorded. Um, you should know all of these. Okay, this is your test for class and then we're gonna be done. You ready? Ready. Okay, pass or fail. You got how many of them? There's three of, there's, okay, you got two shots. I think there's six of them. There's three of you guys, all right, you ready? Or you can get a 50 too, but that's fail too, okay? So you gotta get everything right. All right, you ready, Rivas? Yeah. Here we go. Trom. Um, um, market. Yay, 50. Okay, you got half. It's still an half, though. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Chenna. 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 <laughs> Remember what we saw. Chenna. Chenna. Kind of a hard one. No. No. Oscar, for extra credit. In that case. Yay! Oscar gets 150. Rivas gets 50. <laughs> did not you say that che is the did? Yeah, literally means did, but this is a... This is an idiom. Chena then means in the in that case. Yeah, if did. Ah, uh, okay. If did uh, if so or something. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, Hasso, you ready? Namdu. Nyamdu. <laughs> together. Both together. Perfect. Kabar. Kawar, uh, where? Perfect, 100. Yeah. Yay! Uh, the Nyamdu, I have to confess, I was able to read before you make the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a cheater, but not a liar. That's good. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay. It means together. An I'm honest not- cheater. <laughs> What's that? Honest cheater, I know. That's a yeah. bad cheater. You're not going to cheat for long like that. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is kind of hard, but I think Oscar can do it. What's to? Oh, it's like... Uh... I remember like the first Rivas. Okay, okay, steal his 50. Come on, Rivas, steal it. Yeah, it's like the command, command or like imperative. Vamos. Yes. Perfect. Okay, Rivas, 100 for Rivas. Woo! Okay, Oscar, you're down, to, you're down back to zero. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. What's Nani? Nani? Literally, what's nga? I. Yeah, what's ni? Two. Yeah, so literally us two or both yeah. of us, right? Both of us, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now my test. I'll get this last one. What is it? Um, what does that say? Uh, what? Do we even have this? Plink, plink, yeah, plink, yeah, yeah. I think I read it, but Wait, I don't remember. That means an instance of something. I don't know. This can mean together too. I don't know. Together? Yeah, yeah. It's honorific together. Yeah, I know it from scripture, but I didn't remember having it here. I guess this is the first time we had it. It wasn't in dialogue, was it? No. We had Nyam. Anyway, I still got it. Yay! <laughs> I guess you say that instead of Nyamdu. 
if it's like two llamas or something. Like, Geshela Dang Vi Klenge Sakang Jogiin. Sakang La Jogiin. Geshela and V are going to the restaurant together. Right? You wouldn't say Nyamdu uh, in their case. And I didn't know that one. I know from scripture, I feel like they spell it slightly different in scripture, but we saw four minutes. You want to check with me here? Flan is kind of rare. Yeah. But you see a lot. Flan Chik, you'll see a lot. Did you, did you have to, something to say, Oscar? No, that I, I said yes, and but you cut off, so I didn't hear well. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Flan K is spelled with, like to be born. I know how to spell that. That means simultaneously or something. Here we go. Yeah, here's Flenke. Yeah, Jikta Flenke. Oh yeah, Flenke. This is the inborn, right? As opposed to the learned. Like, uh, like Jikta Flenke. You know, you're born with the seed of seeing yourself as yourself. It's, even in the womb, you're like, it's warm, it's icky it's why is your mom running so much right that's the inborn that's not as opposed to learned how do you say learned oh my god Helenke and eh? oh my god i gotta study how do you say learned God, Flenke. My brain's doing something. Okay, you guys are going to ride with me here. You ready? Don't worry, class is almost over. <clears throat> Here's Gopher. Search settings. Flenke. Because they always put them together within two lines of learned. in the ACI courses. See, the difference between learned, okay. Kuntak, ah, of course, ah, what kind of mind-only scholar am I? Kuntak, do you see how I figured that out? Klenke means inborn. They always talk about it with the learned, right? So I put in the search, I put the word learned, which is what I was looking for, but there could be other ways to say that, right? Like to learn. Close to the word henke, right? Because this is close within two lines of proximity search. You see, Rivas? And so, and only in the ACI courses, the, and only in the sutras, not tantra, just sutra, okay? Because I know they talk about it there because I studied all of them and I finished all my courses. Like you, Rivas, right? And there it is, and I found it. And the, in one try, and there's two incidences of it, which is the same exact one. It's just the review course as opposed to the, the full course. Yes! Okay? That's it. Kuntak means something different in mind only school, right? Kuntak, Shenwang, and Yongdruk. But they use the same word. All right. I did it. I taught you everything. Okay, your job, just uh, start listening to unit six. Just listen to it over and over. And um, you will learn Tibetan very quickly. <clears throat> All right? All right. Thank you very much. You're all awesome. I haven't posted the last few classes yet. I've been busy, but I'll put them up if you want to review them, hear my bad jokes again, you know, all the good stuff. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Ward. You're welcome. You're all amazing. Keep studying. I know it's a lot of time and you're all busy, so. Well, we're, we're planning some, we're soon a trip to the beach. So I will talk to you about it later. <laughs> You're going to write me from the beach and send me annoying nah. pictures of you in a bathing suit. No, nah, no, because we're taking you there. <laughs> <laughs>
but soon, soon. Okay. <laughs> cool. Tell me. It's for the graduation. The graduation. <laughs> Party. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, let's let's talk about. It. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank All you, right. Lord. Adios. Bye. Bye. Bye.